Hello, my YouTube family. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is Dr. Lee. I'm so glad that you made it back here. Today, we have a wonderful video. We will be doing assisting the resident to ambulate. And this skill will be according to Prometric guidelines. For this skill, the only thing that you will need will be a gate belt, okay? If you enjoyed the video, I encourage you to hit the thumbs up button and also the subscribe button below if you haven't done so already. So with that, I'm gonna exit, come back into my patient's room. And today I have a special patient with me. This is my fraternal twin. We're five minutes apart. So enjoy the video demonstration. I'll step out and go into the patient's room. wants us to walk you about 10 steps today. Is that okay? That's fine. I'm going to close the curtain to provide for privacy. I'll wash my hands, gather my supplies, and I'll be right back. So with Prometrics, if the uh, evaluator has told you that you can simulate washing your hands, you can just come over to the side and say, I'll wash my hands. So at this point, I'm washing my hands. My hands are clean. I will pick up my supplies, which will be the gate belt. At the end of the demonstration, I'll talk about the different gate belts and how we put them on and things like that. So now that I have my gate belt, I'm gonna come back to my patient. I'm gonna pull this curtain just so you can see what I'm doing. Now, it says to assist the patient with ambulation. So anytime that we assist a patient. That means that I need to touch the patient. I don't have to physically pull the patient up and swing the patient around, but I do need to touch the patient. So I'm going to go ahead on and let this side rail down. And you may not have side rails on your bed. And I'm going to say, Miss Mary, we're going to go ahead on and move this cover over so that when you swing your legs around, it won't be in the way. And I have one hand and I'll just gently touch her and you can sit on the side of the bed. Okay, now, before the person gets up, they have to have on shoes. So, I'm going to give her her shoes. Here are your shoes and if you can put those on. You do not have to physically stoop down and put the shoes on the client when you're doing your nurse aid testing. The client can put on their own shoes. We just need to give it to them, make sure that they have them, and that they properly put their shoes on, which means if they wear shoestrings, the shoestrings need to be tied up. If the, the tennis or the shoes have a zipper on it, the zipper needs to be zipped up. You will be held responsible if you're the one taking the test. If they put on their tennis and do not tie the tennis shoestring and you allow that person to get up and walk. We want to think about it. If we had a, a two or three year old child and they tried to walk without tying their shoes, we as parents would tell that person, no, sweetheart, go back, tie your shoes before you get up, or we would tie the shoes. Next, after I know that my person is sitting up, their feet is firmly on the floor, they have on non-skid shoes, which would be a tennis or some type of rubber sole shoes, now I'm ready to put the gate belt on my client. So I will ask my client, Miss Mary, if you can raise your hands. The gate belt goes around the client's waist, around the waist area. You can put your arms down. I'm gonna put the belt on. The belt needs to be uh, snug so that I only get a hand through and Raise your arm up so that they can see. You see, I only get a hand through here, and I want it snug like that. You may give it another little tug, because sometimes when the client stands up, it loosens. Now, this is a seven-foot gate belt, so I have a lot of uh, this belt hanging over. I can fold it and then tuck it in on the side so that when the resident stands, it is not in the way. 
Next question comes up is where do I, as the person who's taking the state exam, position myself before I get this person up? I want to say that your hands should be on both sides of the uh, client with your fingers pointing up. So I will grab the gate belt in this direction. I stand in front of my client. This is important. Don't stand to the side to try to get the person up. I'm going to stand in front. Now you have some options. I can either go toe to toe, bend my knees and grab the gate belt on the side. That's one option. Second option, I can have the client kind of separate their legs and I come in and kind of sandwich one knee with, my, with both of my knees, bend and grab on the side. And my third option is I can sandwich both knees with my knees. Position myself, bend a little bit, grab the gate belt with my fingers pointing up on both sides. And this is the position that I'm going to take. Miss Mary, if you can put your hands on my shoulders. This is important. Do not have the person grab your neck because you don't want them to cause you injury. Remember, you want to maintain good body mechanics. And you also need to tell the person when you want them to stand. We call that giving the person a cue, a, um, a little warning. So I'm going to say, Miss Mary, on the count of three, I would like for you to stand. One, two, three. The patient stands with you. You can let go one hand. Keep a hand on this belt at all times. I'm going to turn the belt, my hand, so that I hold the belt in the back. I stand to the side and behind the patient. Once I'm in position, I'm going to tell the patient to take 10 steps forward. And let me kind of move this cord out the way. And we're going to take 10 steps forward, turn around, and come back to the bed. Are you ready, Miss Mary? Let's go. If you have any problems, let me know. You feeling okay? Not dizzy or anything? Okay, great. Take 10 steps, very good, very good. Okay, let me know if you feel dizzy or anything. Now that we have our 10 steps, we're gonna turn around and you'll see how I'm holding the belt in the back. Remember, I maintain my position to the side and behind. Miss Mary, go ahead and turn around. See where my hand is? Okay, we're gonna take 10 steps forward and go back to the bed. You're doing good. No dizziness or anything. Good job. Good job. Good job. Okay, now when you get to the bed, I'm going to grab here. Go ahead and turn around. I'm keeping my hand on the belt at all times. I'm going to slide my hand to the side. Take my other hand, come on the side. And again, I'm going to go knee, uh, toe to toe. Miss Mary, if you could put your hands on my shoulders. And at the count of three, you can sit down. Do you feel the bed, uh, the mattress on the back of your legs? Mm -hmm. That's always good to ask them to feel that. Most patients want to know that it's something there before they start to sit down. So um, let's take one, one step sideways so you'd be more toward the head of the bed. Okay, great. Okay, I'm gonna get toe to toe here. On the count of three, I want you to sit. One, two, three. Good job. Now, at this point, your patient does not have to lie back down in bed, okay? My patient could have been sitting in a chair, which is, I think is a starting position for Prometrics, or your patient can be in the bed. If they're in the chair, same thing. Make sure that they have their shoes on. Make sure that the shoes are on properly, shoestrings tied, zippers up on the side. Put the gate belt on, have the person to stand with you holding the belt on both sides. Once they stand, make sure that the patient is uh, not dizzy or anything. Ambulate the person, bring them back to the chair. Make sure that their legs touch the edge of the chair, and then you can sit the person down. We remove the belt. The patient is not left with the belt on at the end of the skill. Miss Mary, as always, 
here's your call light for you to call me if you uh, need to get a hold of me. Are you comfortable like this? Do you need the TV on or anything? You want a magazine? No. Okay, so my curtain would have been pulled to provide for privacy. I opened it for you to see exactly what I was doing and I wanted you to see her feet and where my feet was positioned. So at this point, I'm going to close the curtain to uh, open it up. I will take my gate belt and put back uh, in the patient's chest area. I wash my hands and I would say I am through with my skill. Okay, so before I do this, I do want to demonstrate with the person sitting in a chair, how do we get them up? Because for Prometrics, you sit in a chair. But I do, I wanted you to know how to get the person up in the bed, but also in a chair. So I'm going to bring a chair over for Miss Mary. And have Miss Mary sit in the chair. Okay, Miss Mary's going to take her shoes off and we will do this again with the person sitting in a chair. This is the starting position for Prometric, sitting in a chair. Step out, come right back. Good morning, Miss Mary. How are you doing? Fine. Great. My name is Dr. Lee, so I'm here to assist you with ambulation. Is that okay? I see you sitting in the chair. Why don't we go ahead on and give you your shoes for you to put on and make sure, please, that you tie your shoes. I'm just doing this little quick part here. I would have washed my hands before you come in and talk to, to, to the patient, provide for privacy, but I want you to see how we get them up if they're sitting in a chair. Once um, the patient feet is firmly on the floor, they have their shoes on, their tennis, everything is tied up or secured, I would come to my patient and say, Miss Mary, if you can raise your hands, let me put this gate belt around you. Make sure you go around the waist area. So I'm just going to kind of tuck it in. Again, I stand in front of the person. I'm not going to try to get them up this way because most people may want to do that. That's the wrong way. I want to come again, toe to toe or knees, support the knees. Either way is your choice. I like both knees. I'm going to come around the side, fingers pointed up. Miss Mary, put your hand on my shoulders. On the count of three, I want you to stand. One, two, three. I get the person up, slide my hand to, to the back, and now we're able to walk. Okay, so the walking will be the same. Take 10 steps, we'll just take five for demonstration purposes. We'll turn around, still holding in the back, go back to the chair, turn around, make sure that you feel the back of the chair. You do, I'm gonna slide my hands to the side. Come over, Miss Mary, put your hands on my shoulders. On the count of three, we'll sit. Let me get my feet right by your toes. One, two, three, you can sit. Okay, now I'm going to take my gate belt off. Mary, just lean forward just a little bit. Now, when they're sitting in a chair and you bring your client back, you want to look at the back of the chair to make sure that the person is seated in the chair properly. 
The way that you know that the client is in the chair properly is that the back, the person's back is against the back of the chair and their buttocks should be at the back of the chair. This way you know your client is sitting properly in the chair. You want to give your client the call light. You can call me if you need anything. Would you like a magazine or the TV on? You're, you're good. I'm going to put my <clears throat> supplies up, open my curtain, wash my hands, and at that point, I'm through with my skill. So that is assisting the person with ambulation. But let's talk about these gate belts. There are two different types of gate belts. One is what I call the teeth and the throat. The reason I say the teeth is that it have these grooves here. When you go to put this type of gate belt on a client, you want the part with the grooves next to you and this part that I call the throat up in the air. So you would put it around the client's waist and I'm a visual learner, so I like to say go through the teeth, just like your mouth, and then down the throat. So I'm gonna go around by the grooves, the teeth, get it snug so you only get a hand through. Then I'm going to go down the throat. Whatever excess that you have with the belt, just kind of tuck it out of the way so that when you're walking, your, your client is not hanging down. Some people are short, they may trip over it. So just get it out of the way so that you keep your patient safe while you're ambulating. The second type of belt is more like a buckle type belt. And let me show you how that, that works. The buckle. There are two little levels right here. You just squeeze it in and the uh, belt comes out. To fasten it, push it in, squeeze on the side, comes out. So I would have the patient raise their hands, put it around their waist, buckle it, pull this part to adjust it, so that you're able to get a hand through. Take the excess, tuck it in on the side. And then everything else is uh, what we demonstrated, whether the patient is in the bed or the patient is in a chair. All right, I hope that this, this is clear. I cannot stress enough, some of the critical points will be making sure that when you put this gate belt on the person, it's not loose. If it's loose, the person can just slide out of it and you're not supporting the person. When you put the belt on, don't hold it in the front. As you can tell, there's a lot of room up in here. The evaluator will be looking at that. You should only be able to get a hand, your fingers through the space between the person's body and the belt. Those are critical steps. Other things again, Make sure the person have on some type of rubber sole shoes or tennis on their feet. You give the person warning, check on them while they're walking. All right, so again, this is Dr. Lee. I have my twin sister here and her name is Teresa. And this is demonstrating assist, assisting the client with ambulation. I hope you enjoyed it. Again, if you did, give me a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button below. You're welcome to leave any comments, questions that you may have, and I'll try to answer them, you know, as quickly as I can. All right, and with that, I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.